don't say that to me. You have me. Okay, you have me. You will always have me. Bola. That's the story of my life. You know, sometimes I find it difficult to describe myself. <laughs> like you can ask my children, what do I do? They can't even explain it. Just that daddy is always at home, you know, and all of that. But of course, I'm a believer. I'm a gospel movie producer, an actor, um, an entrepreneur, um, graphic designer, um, video editor, so many things. Forex trader. <laughs> I'm a crypto enthusiast. So many things, right? Basically. Well, I think the journey started how many years ago? So many years ago when my dad came from Ghana as a missionary. Um, and then I guess he had the passion for reaching out to younger generations, you know, talking about sexual purity and all. And um, if you have that kind of message, you have to think about how well you can actually preach that message to, to the people. And one of the ways that we found out that would be very effective was drama. So um, it was like we trying to preach or convey a message, but we're trying to look for a platform that makes I mean, a lot of sense that people can connect with. And that was how the journey started. And then, you know, my dad went to the Mount Zion um, Institute of um, Christian drama and from there I actually got the passion as well <laughs> and I started the journey started right from school I was the drama coordinator at some point in my um, school church you know that was when, my final year and then I also went to Mount Zion um, Institute I connected with great minds people that you know doing it for kingdom purpose and um, it was very very exciting and um, that was how the journey started. Through drama, I met my wife as well. And, um, you know, um, we've learned a whole lot from the, from the journey. And here we are today, to the glory of God. Purpose for me is basically impacting others through different means, all right? Um, I wouldn't say it's just purely drama. Whatever I can do to impact the lives of people, because I mean, um, service to God and humanity is the best work of life, they say. So whatever I do to impact others, be it um, drama, even in my business, I do not see my business as just a mere business. I see it as an avenue to reach out to people, to help them, to impact them, to preach um, Jesus to them. So whatever I can do to help me preach Jesus to people, that is the purpose for me and I find it fulfilling that way. Even though, you know, um, the movie industry is quite creative and, you know, it's, it's actually fun. So you're doing um, what God has called you to do in a fun way as well. So I think that is why I, I tend to move towards the drama side more. Down is a is a journey of faith. You know, um, it all started, I guess, just um, about five years ago. That was when it started. And when the first draft was written, it was titled "The Pastor's Assistant." At that time, um, never had funds to continue with the production. And um, even shortly before Man Down production, I made some serious business mistakes of my life where. I lost a whole lot of money, like huge amount of money. So it was looking as though Man Down would not come to pass. In fact, a month before the production, Man Down wasn't going to happen, right? But you know, when you when you set your heart to do some things and you know that God is leading you, somehow God will make a way. You know, that was the greatest challenge that I've ever faced. Not just about the production, but in my life entirely, you know, losing that kind of amount of money was huge. That's the biggest I've ever lost in my life. It has never happened before. So um, personally, individually, and in, 
in terms of ministry, it was quite um, challenging. And you know, at the end of the day, I just give God the glory. You know, um, going to the location as well. Um, that will be the first time ever I'm going to be producing a major movie. I have never done that before, so I was learning on the job. And after that experience, I said to myself, if anybody is going to call me for movie production again, I was not going to complain <laughs> because it was it was tough um, coordinating people, ensuring that everybody is fine. I mean, ensuring people can get. Um, accommodation, feeding people, ensuring that the scripts are okay, getting the different location. It was very, very, very tasking, very tasking. And one of the biggest challenges also was to get the right cast to interpret those roles. Because after writing the old script, and we've seen how beautiful the script is, who will play this role? Sometimes we just go to God in prayer. God, please, who is Bola's mommy? <laughs> who is Bola's mommy? Review Bola's mommy to us. It was tasking, you know, we share the idea with other drama member. Who is Bola's mom? Like, we don't know who Bola's mom is <laughs> and all of that. So getting the right people to take those roles were quite challenging. And then, but at the end of the day, we, 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 we're good. Another thing that I find challenging about the production was um, the location that we used. Everything that you saw there, Omanda was actually shot um, at Redemption Camp, apart from the last scene where Chidi was carrying the boy. But every other thing, Redemption Camp. So getting the right spot at the Redemption Camp was quite, a, was quite asking. You know, not everybody wants to open their doors for us to use their houses for locations. Um, and time was going, you know. But at the end of the day, we thank God we got some connections and I think it's, it's a result of all the prayers that we've, you know, invested into this project. Um, but at the end of the day, we thank God we are fine and man down is out right now. <laughs> yeah. The, the challenge about that camp was we, we never expected what we saw. So for instance, there was a particular location we wanted to use that should be, I think, the pastor's wife's house. You get. So you can imagine doing the setup just like you've done the setup here. But for us, the setup took a long time, you know, five hours, six hours. We are still trying to get the right spot, get the right light. And after the setup, the owner of the house just told us that, sorry, we have to move. Do you understand? So it's like we've wasted time. It's not time for us to shoot and then we couldn't do it. It was quite, quite frustrating. And a whole lot of other places like that, they'll give us time and they say, you have to be from this time to this time you're out. And when you're doing movie production, it's not usually like that. But at the end of the day, someone in the team just said, ah, there's a pastor that I know that has one kind of connection all of that. We call the pastor and, you know, the pastor connected us to a place where we eventually used and we thank God. Because if that challenge did not happen we will not get that space that we used and we use that space for a whole lot of you know scenes you know Bola's parents mom um, pastors um, wives mom um, house um, Tejiro's house um, exterior of the church we just used that place we maximized that place we were there for like four or five days and um, we thank God because one thing I've learned you know through this experience is when it seems things are tough, when it seems that one door is open, possibly God is trying to create something you know, better and amazing for you. The role of the church is just like um, the hospital. You do not expect people that are okay to come to the hospital. You expect to see people that are sick. The church should be like, in quote, hospital for people that are sick spiritually. Um, but um, we've seen over the years that some of these churches, not all of course, do not want to accept the sick ones. The only one who accept the ones that are okay, which I feel we really need to address. You know, when they see some people dressed in not okay way, I'm not encouraging that anyway, or when they see people that are having some challenges um, based on some doctrinal issues, they might not even want that person to step into church. 
and I feel that one of the things that God has called us to do or one of the examples we can you know get from Jesus himself is the love that he has shown unto us and I feel that we need to replicate that as well not just in church in our daily lives you know to love one another irrespective of what the person is doing irrespective of some other challenges and with that we can actually attract you know them to ourselves and you know make Jesus attractive to these people and at the end of the day you know they get okay and then through that they can also disciple other people not just um, from the first glance you feel no this person is not okay or the person has committed or made a mistake and you feel like I cannot associate with this person any longer you get these people need open arms for us to actually love them and care for them and show the example that Jesus has made for us. Let's do it. The, the question is quite tricky. Um, the thing is this, a lot of producers, gospel producers, because I've interacted with a whole lot of them, not that they are doing anything wrong in particular, but the gospel movie, should I call it industry, it's not an industry, generally is not a money-making venture in quotes. A lot of people, I can say 90% of the movie producers, they do this in, they just reach out to people just the way you preach to people. So they have their normal regular job, but God has called them into the drama ministry. And you know, most times they do their best actually. They put in all the resources they have, even though the resources might be limited, but they put in everything they have to actually push whatever they want to push. And so different messages, different um, category of people. And I tell you, even the ones that we've seen, I feel like, oh, it's reaching out to people and it's blessing lives. You know, you see those movies and you are going to be seeing thousands of views and people are giving their lives to Christ. People are being, you know, reconciled back to Christ. So for different, um, you know, um, categories of movie production, you have your own um, audience and people that will be blessed through it. So for us, for me, you know, I wanted to take it to the next level actually um, because how do you see um, Christian movies in the cinemas and with that high quality? I am privileged to actually be doing something like that, you get. But I keep thinking, what if I don't have that kind of resources? Should that stop me from doing what God has called me to do? I'm going to do it with excellence but with the resources that I have. And I guess that's been the challenges, you know, so far. Um, a lot of brands do not want to support Christian movie because they feel that it's not a money-making venture. But these guys will not wait, right? They will not wait. They have to do what God has called them to do, irrespective of what it is. But um, I feel that the quality can always be better, you know, definitely. I hope you get the point. <laughs> I feel that movie making is actually make believe. You, you, how would I put it? Make believe in the sense that you want your viewers to be to believe exactly what you're doing. You know, you want that believability. Let me put it that way. So there are some things that you necessarily you don't have to put in, but as long as it is it is real. For instance, if in a gospel movie, I want to depict a character of someone making love to another person for instance there are ways I can do it that it's believable do you understand I don't have to go real I want to show actually some maybe romantic scenes there are ways that I can do it that is still believable do you understand so I feel that for gospel movie there is there are limits to what you can do basically and that is why sometimes when you get entangled to some things just because you want to go very well, you may find yourself hooked and um, you may not be able to recover from that very early. So there are limits. In terms of funding um, creative content by gospel movie makers, I would say that um, we we are collaborative, we work together, you get. 
and um, it's just unfortunate that a lot of people you know recently have not seen what we have been doing behind the scene and i believe that all the things that we've been doing behind the scene within a very short time is going to open up everyone will notice but it's just it's just for now i'm sure that within some few months from now few years from now you're going to see what we're doing guys are doing major major work we are we are getting fund fun, we are getting funding you know from from other partners as well and um, i've seen some storylines already that have not even been produced by a lot of producers you know and when i see or when i saw some of these things i'm like wow we are getting somewhere and i'm so happy and proud of where we're going to go to or where we're going, where we are getting um getting to so Netflix international communities you watch out but the truth of the matter is this we are already there you know sometimes you, you see our movies out and within a very short time you're going to be seeing 500,000 1 million views it's already happening even though not on those platforms you're talking about but of course we are not limited that's just the way I see it Okay, the truth is this, movie production doesn't pay my bills. If, as a matter of fact, I am paying movie production bills. <laughs> I am paying the bills. For instance, Man Down, Man Down is a project that is um, worth maybe over 15 million in quotes, in total. Maybe, if not more, including the cinema process and all of that. And I wouldn't say that I've made even a millionaire from that. You get And I'm willing to go ahead and continue. Get because I see that as a purpose, as purpose for me. However, other things that I do, fund, um, you know, all of these other ventures. Um, like I said earlier, um, um, into crypto, I mean, forex, um, into advertising, um, advertising that has billboards and all of that. You know, TV advertising, digital media advertising, and co. And um, I'm also a coach, crypto coach, forex coach. So I have hundreds of students um, in different parts of the world, not just in Nigeria, that we meet regularly. I have a platform called The Other School, theotherschool.net. That's a platform where we teach people um, different other things that they won't learn from their normal regular school. That is why it's called The Other School. So, for instance, in your school, they can tell you that um, we should come and dissect a thought. Now, how will dissecting a thought translates to money? So we try to bring in the balance and we teach people some, uh, you know, life skills, um, um, which includes real estate, which includes affiliate marketing, forex, crypto, even network marketing. We teach them all of those things and then they can decide to go their different paths and all of that. So those are the different ventures that I do, you know, um, to generate some funds. So I'm a kingdom entrepreneur, so I size my own um, projects um, I also try as much as possible you know to fund other people's um, project as well um, because we are all working together for the same for the same goal and for the same course to reach out to people basically right from school I already had an idea of the year I will get married, even though there wasn't any female then. I already had the idea. And when I eventually met her, I had to tell her this is when I'm going to get married <laughs> based on you know what I wanted right from school. I said I was going to get married 2015, my birth month, November. And fortunately, her birth month was also November. And you know what? We started courtship and about six months, seven months to the wedding. I had no job, no money, nothing, nothing. I'm a guy of strange faith, you get? Five months to the wedding, to the date we set for ourselves, even though no job. Okay, I got a good, a okay job, five months to the wedding. Five months, okay job. The strangest thing or the craziest thing I've ever done was, we went ahead to print IV, wedding IV and we started distributing to people that we know that will come. At this point, I had no idea of accommodation, no accommodation, no suits, no wedding gown, nothing, nothing. 
I just started a job five months to the wedding. So what we did, thank God my wife understands. At some point we were thinking, I hope we've not, we hope we've not taken the wrong decision by doing this thing. I said, don't worry, God is in charge. <laughs> and so my first two months of working in that particular place, that would be three months to the wedding. That was when my first salary, second month salary, with my wife's salary, we gathered everything together, we got our first accommodation. We did that together, you know. Now I have just three more salary left <laughs> for the wedding. And at the end of the day, people that came was like, are you serious? You know, I couldn't, I, till now I can't even explain it. You know, after the wedding, different blogs, different wedding blogs, everywhere was, ah, I said, thank God though. But the end of the day, it went well. That particular accommodation we got, for instance. <laughs> I couldn't find any other thing. It was just we say I bought cotton, bought cotton. My wife did her masters, and my dress that she used for her masters, we brought it home. That was the mattress we started using, and of course we needed to cook. I collected cam gas for my parents, and that was all in their house: mattress, cam gas, and cotton. That was how we started, and the place was like a football field. The, the, the house was like a football field. But at the end of the day, we thank God for where we are today, you know. Sometimes, you just need to take some crazy, crazy decision, crazy, crazy act of faith, as long as you know that God is leading you. Nothing like honeymoon. We did our honeymoon three, three years ago. <laughs> so, that was it. There's something called the Mount Zion um, Power Night. Um, singles Power Night. Singles Power Night. Um, happens in Ibadan, I think, once or twice a year. I can't remember. Um, on this particular day, I decided to go. I wasn't even sure. You know, my dad was going to minister. And I went. Uh, my wife also went there. I never met her before then. That was, oh, oh, have I seen you before? No. <laughs> Are we met before? No. So that was the first time we will see, you know. At that point, he, um, we came back to Lagos together in the same vehicle. Um, and that would be the first time I would ever see her. I never, we never had any conversation, we were just seen. Then after some months, I was invited for a movie location in Oyo, Oyo town, um, to play a particular role. The, name, um, the movie is called Ijao Minira. I was invited, my dad was invited, and my dad was the main cast. I was meant to play my dad when he was much younger, so like same thing. And she was also invited, I never knew. So we met again in New York. Like, ah, what's happening? She was meant to play a maid, but um, somehow she didn't play that role. Her role was changed on set. I was meant to play the role of a cult leader and I was meant to stab someone as a cult leader that's my character not me and the person I was meant to stab now happens to be my wife it gets so <laughs> so I stabbed her in the movie <laughs> I was like I asked to date me but you refuse to date me now I'm going to stab you die <laughs> and then that was all happened but during that movie location we had to talk you know um, at some point, she served me food, you know, and all of that. We had conversation. At that point, I started learning um, video editing, movie editing, um, and all of that, movie production. And she told me that she was interested in also learning that. I was like, oh, fine, fine. You can come to the place I'm learning. So, um, and we started going after the location in Lagos. We started going to learn together. So, that bus movement, going together, coming together, always together in the bus and all of that, we started interacting, started, you know, getting to know ourselves better and all of that. But even at that point, my eyes did not see clearly. For some people that were pointing attention, are you sure God is not saying anything about this uh, sister? Because, maybe because I wasn't very ready then. So it was at that point I had to sit down, like, guy, don't take things for granted though. She might be the one, you know. Then at that point, I was so serious about it. I started praying and all of that. And I felt like, yeah, she's the person. She's the person. And um, 
I went to her house sometimes, she stays with her auntie, I stayed with my parents, I went to her house, then I told her I wanted to see her. Then what was I discussing? My entire life story. And this was what happened to me. They were like, so why are you telling me all this? <laughs> I said, I just decided to tell you, I'm going. <laughs> and I left. But what it led to her daughter, um, I proposed to her on phone. I couldn't face her physically. Um, first time proposal, you know. But the second time proposal, I did it physically. I bought an oversized ring because I couldn't measure her. <laughs> I proposed to her right in front of my parents. I, 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 I told her to come home. My parents want to see her and all of that. And she came thinking that she was going to, she's coming to see my parents. Yeah, my parents came and they were discussing. And before you know it, I popped the question, will you marry me? And then she said, yes. And that was how our first wedding counseling started, or marriage counseling. Daddy and mommy just sat down. Now that you have decided to say yes, these are the things that you must and you must not do. <laughs> and that was how everything started. And then we moved on. We fixed the date to our wedding, like I said, and we pursued it vigorously. And here we are today, two children after. Glory be to God. <laughs> Unwinding, that's that's quite tough. I'm, I'm I'm an introvert, so most times I stay at home. But I, because of my relationship, I ensure I'm the one that goes out the most. I have to take her along. Let's go out. So we'll go for shows. Um, like this Sunday, we, we are likely going to go for another show. Um, going to the cinemas is not is something that we really do not do as much. Um, going out to it. That's all. That's all basically. I play games at home. PS4. Um, and most times I unwind on my bed with my laptop. Nothing else. Tiredness is no excuse for lack of grief. Oh, I'm sorry, Ma. Next time, I'll be more gracious. 